Are you looking for inspiration for your next dart frog build? Well, you came to the right video today because my Terra builds are about to get a massive upgrade and I'm gonna build a beautiful bioactive vivarium for them. And I'm gonna show you every step of the way. And if you guys stick around till the end, I'll show you some really awesome feeding of these Terra Billis dart frog. All right, guys, my name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty More from Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. For my enclosure today, I'll be using a nice, sleek Exoterra that goes by the dimensions of 18 by 36 by 18 inches tall. Let's get it. For my first step of this enclosure build, I'm going to grab a piece of styrofoam, press it against the wall of the enclosure, and then I draw a swirly line along the sides as I'm going to be using this to actually make ledges out of it. And then I use a knife to cut it out, but don't be an idiot like me and cut yourself. Then I grab a can of expanding foam and I lay it down all along the back side like I'm frosting a cake. Don't judge me guys, I'm a fat kid at heart, okay? Then I grab my ledges and just place them right in the foam and I'm gonna have it more right in the upper corner. And I repeat the same process for the other side. Then I place some expanding foam along the back of the ledges so this will help anchor it down. Then I lay down some more ledges on this side over here, about a two inches above. Then I lay down some more expanding foam for this side of the wall. And then I actually decide to cover up the whole entire ledges with the expanding foam. So this doesn't give it that jaggy look. And then I repeat this process exactly the same for the other side. And then after it's done curing out, I carve out all the smooth surfaces as this will make it porous, which will allow me to apply my media to it. And for my media, I'll be using Dry Lock Extreme and Black Liquid Cement Coloring. I mix the two together to get the consistency of color I want, which will be dark gray. And then I pour it all along the side of the walls over here, and then grab a brush and just brush it in nicely. And then I just grab wash play sand and just sprinkle it all over the wet dry lock. And then after it's done curing out, this will just give it that really nice naturalistic texture to it. Then I grab some black acrylic paint and I just paint in all along inside the cracks as this will just help define it and add some shadow texture to it. And now I'm done with the background and do you see what I mean like with all the sand and the shadowing it just really makes it look a lot more realistic. Man I'm not gonna lie I kind of feel like Bob Ross after this. Yeah like Bob Ross. And then for my next step, I'll be using filter foam. I like using this for the drainage layer over a leak of clay pebbles because it's so much lighter. And then cut out some window mesh screen, push it in, and this will be used as my substrate barrier. Then I use my homemade terrarium substrate that just consists of orchid bark, sphagnum moss, and organic potting soil. And I like to get it about four inches deep and I like to slope it all the way up to the back. This should give it some depth of field look. And then I'm gonna be using this awesome piece of ghost wood. It comes from the root of the tree. I'm gonna be putting it right in here and just to give it that swoosh look, you know, try to give it some flow. And to hold this wood into place, I use silicone at the anchor points and then I sprinkle some substrate on it to make it blend in. And then I had this really awesome idea to grab these scrap pieces of spider wood that I had and put them all along the base of this ghost wood so it'll look like roots coming out of the mountain cliff sides. I know, it's a pretty sweet idea, right? And this is my final product for the hardscape and like, dude, it turned out so much better than I thought it would. I wasn't expecting to look like this cool over here with like all the little roots hanging out. But man, like sometimes that's what I love. It's just like when you're making art, it just like turns out to be something that you weren't expecting. And that's what totally happened here. But now let's get to planning it. And how would you say it? Paint me like one of your French girls. Then I'll be using this Java moss that I've been propagating for months now from Moss Larry, And I'll be using it as a carpet for this enclosure. Then for my leaf litter, I'll be using magnolia leaves, and I chose these leaves specifically because I thought it would make my frogs look really tiny, and I thought that'd be a really cool effect. And for my first plant that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using spike moss, and I just really love the dark tones on it, and look at the red undertones underneath it. And I'm going to be placing it right here under the tree, just since it, I feel like it'd be a good spot for dark contrast right there. 
Then for my next plant, I'll be using rainbow moss, and I just love the blue tones on this, and as it grows bigger, it'll start turning like purple and red, and I'll be placing it right here inside the ledges and along the backside where I didn't carpet it over with java moss. Then I'll be using my favorite plant of them all, varicosum. I mean, how can you not like the heart-shaped leaf of it and the red tones on the back of it? It just looks so awesome, especially those veins. I'm gonna be placing it right here along the backside, and I like it so much I had to place a second one over here. Okay, I loved it so much I had to put a third one here. And I gotta say the varicosins really make the wall pop now. And then this little plant is called Lemon Button Fern and I really like the look of it. I'm gonna be placing it actually right under the ghost wood root. And I found a baby sprout of it fell out so I decided to just place it right here near the front. Then I placed wet sphagnum moss in the twigs of the roots over here. Then I'll be placing this mix of dusk moss right in between the twigs of this root right here as I think this will give it a little bit more life. Then I'll be using this big patch of java moss and I'll be placing it all along my hardscape over here. And this awesome plant is called Mikata Spatola. This is a little orchid plant. I love the little lightning bolt veins along it. And I'll be placing it right here in the back along the ledge. And I also got this really tiny one. I'm going to be placing it right here at the end of the hardscape. Then I'll be placing some more moss on top of the ledges over here. And this plant right here is called Pilea ovalis. I love the little clover look of it and how dark it is. I'll be placing it throughout the vivarium and this will add some contrast. Now I'm going to be adding some botanicals. This one's called a magnolia seed pod and I'll be placing a couple over here on the left side. And then this one is called lotus pod. I'll be placing it over here. And this last one, it just looks like an acorn cap. And then this plant is called Pilea glauca and I really like the seed green hues of it. I decided to take a bunch of clippings and place them throughout the carpet. And as I was looking throughout this enclosure, I felt like something was still missing, especially right here on the right side. It felt like it was too open, so I felt like I needed another plant. So I decided to put this Neurogilia onto a piece of cork bark, just put some sphagnum moss around its roots, and then I used thread just to hold it in place on the cork bark. And I place it over here on the right side, and what I really like about this piece is that I'm actually going to be able to move it around wherever, so it's not just stuck in one spot. Then I give the vivarium a really good misting. And then for my microfauna, I'll be using orange powder isopods and some springtails. Then to hold in humidity, I place a piece of glass on top of the enclosure that leaves one inch ventilation on both sides. And you're probably wondering yourself, how do we get rid of this hideous side? Well, vital paper. Here comes the star of the show. Leapfrog, baby. Father, I crave food. You heard him, guys. They're hungry. Hey, boys. The peasant has brought food. Nom, 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 nom. Hey, it tastes like Ryan's mother. Hey, you're right. It does taste like his mother. Man, these kids have no respect. God. But man, I really gotta say, I just absolutely love Terrabilis. They're just like my favorite dart frog. I mean, like, dude, they're so freaking bold. Like, look, if I get my finger that close to them, it'll barely even try to run away. But, like, these guys are, like, the Rottweilers of, like, the dart frogs, and they're the biggest, too. And I just love, like, watching them eat. They just destroy and go ham on everything. And that's the reason why I decided to give them such a big upgrade, because, like, dude, these guys are, like, literally the best display frog. And plus, I just love the bright orange on it. How could you not love that? Okay, now, I want to talk about my equipment here. So, for my lighting, I just used a Night Crew LED light that I got off of Amazon, and I... This is what I typically always use and like this light works really well and it's actually at a really great affordable price. Like I've tried other Amazon lights and like really this is just the best one that I personally like. It has the brightest white light while the other ones typically have like a really tint blue and just kind of doesn't give you the right colors. And what's really cool about it is like you could actually put it on a little midnight effect where it's just very light blue so you can see it very dim during the night. 
But yeah, this light has always just grown my plants so well. I honestly don't believe you need one of those like $300 expensive lights that just doesn't make sense to me. And if you guys are interested in the light, I'll leave links down in the description. And man, I just want to say that I'm so freaking happy with how this is actually like turned out. Like it turned out a lot better than I actually expected it to. And like I really can't wait for all the plants to grow in nice and lush where everything looks natural. Watch, give it about six to eight months from now. This thing will just be exploded with nice, beautiful growth. Hey, Bozo. Wait, did you say something? Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, my dude. Uh, all right, guys. My name's Ron, and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles.